The terrible effects of war have long been stressed by many records and archives, these effects range from widespread hunger, death and instability. In this episode we will look at a rather peculiar effect. The faces of war. The metrics from World War I are horrific. In all, there were 37 million military and civilian casualties, 16 million dead and 21 million wounded. Long after armistice was declared, and grass regrew over trenches and craters, the horrors of World War I were visible on the faces of soldiers. New weapons like machine guns and bomb shrapnel, combined with improved medical care, meant people with major injuries survived in visibly scarred ways. During the life and death battles of World War I, looking up from a trench, or out from under a steel helmet meant exposed soft features of faces such as noses, jaws, eyes, and cheeks were lost. Never before had a conflict brought such devastation in terms of death and injury. In response, during the four years of the war, military surgeons developed new and much-needed techniques on and off the battlefield, and in supporting hospitals which in the war's final two years, resulted in more survivors of injuries that would have proved mortal otherwise. Then a group of artists, sculptors in particular, became pioneers in plastic surgery by learning the art of skin grafting and the creation of masks to cover soldiers' wounds. On the Western Front, 1.6 million British soldiers were successfully treated and returned to the trenches. By the end of the war, 735,487 British troops had been discharged following major injuries. The majority of the injuries were caused by shell blasts and shrapnel. Many of the injured had injuries affecting the face, over a third of which were categorized as severe. Historically, this was an area where very little had been attempted, and survivors with major facial injuries were left with major deformities that made it difficult to see, breathe easily, or eat and drink as well as looking horrific. A young ENT surgeon from New Zealand, Harold Gillies, Working on the Western Front saw attempts to repair the ravages of facial injuries and realized that there was a need for specialized work. Gillies was given the go-ahead, and by January 1916 was setting up Britain's first plastic surgery unit at the Cambridge Military Hospital in Aldershot. Plastic surgery was not yet systematically taught, as medicine had not caught up to the advances of war. To rehabilitate soldiers who had been disfigured, Professional artists ran mask workshops between 1918 and 1919. In Paris, American sculptor Anna Coleman Ladd led the American Red Cross studio for portrait masks for mutilated soldiers, creating hand-painted copper masks, likewise modeled on pre-war photographs. In the age before plastic surgery, masks were the best option for veterans with faces scarred by war. The end results, however, were somewhat uncanny. These faces were a permanent reminder among many that even beyond treaties of peace, the devastating effects of war run beyond and are deeply rooted in society, leaving behind a look of horror and scarred. Thank you for watching the video, kindly subscribe to the channel for more.